Welcome once again to the Home Base Business Success Podcast. And good morning again, everybody. Today's topic, why customer service is either job one or you may be out of a job. I think we've heard it before that, you know, customer service is extremely important in business. And that is something that is, I think it's something that we say, something that we hear so often People may think, oh, well, it's, it's kind of trite, it's kind of meaningless, it's a cliche, but I mean, think about it. If your customers are not happy with your service, with your product, why should they keep doing business with you? I mean, really, just to put it bluntly, why should people continue to do business with you if you're not focused on providing the highest quality service that you possibly can? Won't they just go someplace else and find what they want somewhere else and may even find it cheaper? And in order to illustrate this, I want to use a real life example from our local community. I don't normally do this, but I mean, the bad example that this store has given in our local community is something that we can all learn from, something that I hope this store learns from, because it's a business that we've been doing business with for 30 years. It's a very old, established business in our local community. And it's gone through management changes. It's gone through a lot of changes. And our local community has gone through a lot of changes, too. And, uh, I mean, up till now, it's been managing to weather those changes very good. But, uh, you know, that has not always been the case. And it's certainly not the case right now. And so to give a little background, this this grocery store, let's just call it Five Star Grocery, because, you know, that's close to what the actual name actually is. But they used to be a business that really didn't care about customer service, quality of customer service, things like that. They used to be very poorly managed. And, you know, it was a family owned business. But the family member that was running the business wasn't really doing a very good job. And the first time that I walked into this this store, it's a grocery store, and they had a lady who was running the courtesy booth in the grocery store. And what caught my attention was that this lady was wearing a T-shirt that said, I love my attitude problem. And this lady did have an attitude problem. That wasn't just a joke. She actually did. She was one of the worst people that I I dealt with at that store for the longest time. And she was in charge of the courtesy booth. And in, in my family, my dad used to say they should rename it to the discourteous booth. But no, it, it was like, man, a lot of their, their employees, she wasn't alone. A lot of their employees did have attitude problems, and they just acted like they were doing you a favor by allowing you to shop in that grocery store. And it was really the darndest thing, but this store could get away with that kind of bad customer service because they were literally, for the longest time, the only game in town. But then things began to change. The local community began to grow. You know, we used to be kind of, might as well call it a cow town. Very rural, very, uh, you know, 
out in the sticks. But, you know, as, as more people began to move into the county and the cow- county began to grow, other businesses began to expand into the area, giving Five Star Grocery more of a run for their money. And so what we saw is we had a smaller grocery store open up. We had another grocery store expand not too far away from where we live. We had Dollar General move into the community, opening two locations on either side of the county. And of course, Dollar General had their normal Dollar General stuff, which they still do, Plus groceries, you know, including frozen foods. They they didn't have, you know, like fresh meat, fresh vegetables, but they did have a lot of other grocery items. And they were pricing their stuff a little bit cheaper than what Five Star was. So how Five Star rose to meet this occasion and this part of the story is quite admirable, and my hat goes off to the old owners of Five Star Grocery in Hermitage, Missouri, because the way that they rose up to meet that challenge was that they got in a new manager that would do a better job of cleaning the place up. They got rid of a lot of the problem employees So no more walking in and seeing people wearing T-shirts advertising, I love my attitude problem. No, rather, they would hire people that actually were concerned about giving good customer service and helping people and providing the best possible service that they could do. And they began to expand the services that they offered what the uh, management did at that time, again, which was quite admirable. My hat goes off to them. They began to think, what service can we provide that our competition either cannot do or will not do? And one of the things that they did, they opened up a nice, They at that time they had a great bakery, You could get fresh made pizza. You could get fresh made donuts. You could get a lot of stuff. They had a nice deli section at one time. And then they started to offer home delivery to shut ins in our local community. And I mean, this home delivery service was just awesome. They would do it five days a week. And I mean, they deliver practically anything that they sold. I think they they drew the line at liquor and tobacco because I think under our state law, that is illegal. Uh, That law may have changed with COVID restrictions and the lockdown and whatnot. But everything else, they would deliver to your door. And this was a valuable service in our community because we are a community of rural people you know, farmers and, uh, you know, people like that. And we are also a community of retired people, older folks with bad eyesight that cannot drive. And, you know, having that delivery service was really, it, it became a lifeline for a lot of older people in our community. And that store under the old management really put a lot of effort into providing the best quality service that they could. And, I mean, they were serious about providing that service. If one person couldn't make it in, if one person called in sick, they would have a backup. You know, they had like two people that would normally do the service, you know, take the phone orders over the phone. And if either one of them couldn't, the manager himself would be taking the phone call, taking the orders and delivering the orders. It was really outstanding the way they they took that service so seriously for the longest time. 
And I mean, my my hat's just off to them because they they took a grocery store that was facing a lot of serious competition, a store that had been in the community probably for at least four decades. You know, I'm I'm relatively new in this area. I've only been living here 30 years. And that store really had been here longer than I had. And what they did is they, they took a store that had been around for a long time, was facing some stiff competition, and rose to meet that competition by providing the best possible customer service, including home delivery. And I mean, the old management that was there just up until a couple years ago was really outstanding. They did a great job of policing the, uh, the, the problem employees, getting rid of them, hiring people who would do a good job, and paying them what they were worth. And a lot of those people, man, they were worth their weight in gold. But sadly, as our story goes, that did not remain the story forever and ever. Amen. Uh, A new company came in, bought up the old grocery store, and you know what they say, a new broom sweeps clean. And they got rid of a lot of the good employees because, you know, why pay somebody a premium wage when you can get rid of them and hire in two people who will work for less? And that's what they did. I mean, instead of keeping the good employees that were providing excellent customer service, they began to hire in the old employees. Matter of fact, that's one thing that they advertised that they would do is that they said, hey, if you used to work for this store back, you know, 10, 20 years ago, got fired, you might be able to come in, get a job interview. We might actually give you your old job back. And I couldn't believe they were actually saying this on their Facebook page of all places. But yeah, they they were going out of their way to get rid of the employees that were doing an outstanding job and replacing them with folks who were just working for minimum wage, really just slave wages. And uh, their, their standards fell. Customer service standards fell. And I mean, instead of offering home delivery, five days a week, where even the manager himself would be bringing the groceries to you in order to make the service happen, what they did is that they hired two people who were pretty good, actually, for you know beginners, for new hires. They were actually pretty good, but they insisted that only those two people could do the job. So if you had a situation where one of those two people had to call in sick, the service would be suspended for that day. So they went from delivering five days a week to delivering two days a week unless somebody called in sick, and then it could could become zero days a week because if the order taker couldn't come in and take the order, they didn't have a backup plan. They didn't have anybody else that would pick up the phone and take the order. They would just suspend the service. They would have the normal person, you know, whoever open, uh, answered the phone, tell you that, yeah, we're, we're open, but we can't deliver today because so-and-so called in sick. Under the old management, if so-and-so called in sick, somebody else would be taking that order in that person's place. And so, yeah, they hired two people and put the entire burden of the job on those two people with no backup. So if you lost your order taker, no service that day. If you lost the delivery driver, if he uh, called in sick or went on vacation, 
no backup plan, no delivery, no customer service. And it really forced a lot of people in our area, including us, to look at other options, to look at other companies that would deliver on days that Five Star Grocery decided they either couldn't or wouldn't deliver. And we found out that we have a lot of other options. You know, I went to the Walmart website, found out that even though the nearest Walmart store is like 30 miles away, you know, we can order home delivery from over the Five Star website. And, you know, I found out that we can get a lot of the stuff that we would normally get through Five Star we could get through Walmart only cheaper and with free delivery with a $35 minimum order, which, you know, our grocery order is always $50 or higher usually. So that $35 minimum order is nothing. And then I found out that a lot of the stuff we could also get through Amazon delivery services, sometimes cheaper. Not always, but sometimes cheaper. And I just got into the habit whenever we were needing something delivered to the house, because I am an older American with not really the worst eyesight, but not the best eyesight for driving. So I quit driving a few years ago. I'm getting my eyesight kind of repaired now, shall we say. My health is improving. I've been focusing on improving my overall health, losing some weight. And notice my eyesight is coming back to where it used to be. So one of these days, I'll be able to get my driver's license back, get a car back, and uh, get back to our old way of life. But, you know, what I noticed as a person that currently doesn't drive due to health problems that, uh, you know, we could uh, get stuff delivered through a variety of different companies. And I learned just to price compare online. But I always used to love shopping, and I still do, shopping at local family-owned businesses. And back when Five Star Grocery used to be a family-owned business rather than a corporately-owned business, I mean, we had people there who cared about the community, who cared about customer service, and who would literally, literally go the extra mile to provide services that other vendors in the local community either couldn't or wouldn't do. And when the the new company took over and began to gut the employees, began to cut services, began to really cut back on the quality of customer service, we began to find out that we could get stuff delivered through Walmart. We could get stuff delivered through Amazon. And I, I hate doing that because... I used to be a Walmart employee. I know how they treat their employees. But, you know, when you need stuff delivered to your door and you don't really, one one of your main options is dried up, your local option is dried up, then, yeah, you've got to deal with the, the corporate option. And to tell the truth, you know, our local grocery store, used to be family owned it's not family owned anymore now it's become just another corporate giant only this is a corporate giant that doesn't really seem to care about the local community and as a result they are losing our business we don't buy as much from five star grocery now as what we used to two years ago, three years ago, four years ago. I mean, yeah, now it's like I I put together a small grocery order. I focus on stuff that we can't get delivered through Amazon or Walmart, namely fresh vegetables, fresh milk, fresh meat, and everything else 
We go through Walmart. We go through Amazon. Used to be Five Star got all that business. But when customer service no longer becomes job one, you can't blame your customers for looking for other options. And this is something that we can all learn from. Whether we are home-based entrepreneurs, more corporately-based entrepreneurs, or traditional brick-and-mortar store business owners, customer service has got to be job one, or you may find yourself out of a job. Sam Walton, the founder of Walmart, knew this. He had a quote. I don't have it in front of me right now, but it was a quote that said, more or less, the customer is the most important person in the store because the customer has the ability to fire anybody in this company simply by refusing to do business at that store and taking their business someplace else. So if you are currently running a successful business, whether it be home-based, whether it be internet-based, whether it be a traditional brick-and-mortar store, whether it be a service, you know, whatever it is, customer service has got to be job one. Because if you get enough customers that become dissatisfied with the way things are being run and they start shopping around and they start taking their business someplace else, it may create enough of a cumulative backlash effect to where you may very well find yourself out of business rather than in business. So yes, make customer service job one in everything you do, or you may find yourself out of a job. This is Ralph signing out. Thanks for dropping by. If you want to know what I do by way of an online business, I'm going to put that link down in the program description below. Join me. I would love to have you. I would love to sponsor you in my online business. But, uh, you know, hope you found some value in this, and we, we will be back tomorrow with another topic exploring problems in home-based business and solutions in home-based business. And as entrepreneurs, let's be focused on the solution rather than the problem. Take care. We'll see you tomorrow. God bless. Bye-bye.